The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-4 through 4 says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Notice the last sentence lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. This suggests that the people being described in this passage of Scripture will indeed have an element of the love of God in them, but they will love themselves more than God. They will love money more than God. They will love pleasure more than God. This led me to the conclusion that this passage of Scripture is not referring to unbelievers. There is no love of God in the hearts of unbelievers. The world hates God. Therefore, this passage of Scripture is referring to the great falling away where some will depart from the faith. Today, we are going to focus on those who love themselves more than God. We are all susceptible to this. Therefore, you and I should ensure we do not fall into this trap of the enemy, of making ourselves idols in our own lives. Humans seem to have no regard for divinity and the superiority of the living God. Instead, they have become so self-centered and obsessed with their own personality. Many have rejected God in pursuit of their own preferences and chosen the path of disobedience. The world preaches individualism. The new mantra has been me first and me only afterwards. And even Christians are adopting this belief. Ours is not to copy the ways of the world. Ours is to follow the instructions of Christ and do the will of the Father. Self-obsession is a sin before God. And just like every other sin, it has its own rewards. For every action, there are always consequences. Even self-obsession has both its spiritual and physical implications. When we become so obsessed with ourselves that we can't see beyond the love that we show ourselves, we hinder the flow of God's love in our hearts. Lovers of self will take away God as the focus and put themselves at the epicenter of their lives and existence. It is an anti-God doctrine. In the kingdom, self isn't the focus. As a matter of fact, the more we die to self and me, the more we see the light of who the Father wants us to be. Lovers of themselves also puts self on the highest pedestal, removing God from the affairs of their lives and his rightful position in their lives. Self-obsession makes self an idol, where mankind seeks to find life apart from God, who is supposed to be the focus of our lives and the center of attraction. Do you know one of the ways God deals with selfishness in the life of a person? is through the institution of marriage? Let me tell you something. I have seen more marriages destroyed from selfishness than infidelity. A marriage with two selfish people will never work. If you are a selfish person, you are setting up your marriage to fail. Marriages are not easy. It won't always be roses and romantic dates. Sometimes it will be everyday chores and bad breath. Allow me to talk about selfishness in marriages for a little while. What you need to know is that marriage is two broken people coming together. There will be fights and disagreements. You're not perfect. You're not easy to live with because you're not perfect. No one is perfect. And the worst person to be married to is someone who thinks they're perfect. Someone who thinks they're always right. Take this sermon with humility. I find that in marriages when the husband and wife disagree on something, most of the time there's right and wrong from both sides. Very rarely do you find one side that is completely wrong and one side that is completely right. I want to encourage you to die to self. Selfishness will have you fighting your husband or wife in a bid to be right, rather than joining the force to find a solution. So many Christian marriages are failing because people are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Selfishness. It's all about me and my feelings. Selfishness. It's all about me and my rules. Selfishness. It's all about me and my perspective. Please listen to me. You are not always right. Accept that and look at the situation from your husband or wife's perspective. Your wife is not your enemy. She's not a bad woman. Just be more considerate and listen to her. Not to respond to her, but listen to her to understand her perspective. Your husband is not your enemy. He's not the devil's brother. Don't treat him like an enemy. Listen to him accept that you are not perfect and you are not always right. Stop fighting each other and start fighting the problem together. 
Stop being selfish and self-centered. Allow me to raise the temperature a bit more. Allow me to be blunt, because the truth is, so many people who claim to be Christian have a one-way ticket to hell because of this area. They are lovers of themselves more than God. Their desires come before everyone else. I'm sorry if I offend you, but it's better to be offended and go to heaven than to not be offended and head to eternal darkness. If you can never say sorry in your home, you are selfish. That spirit of pride that stops you from acknowledging you are wrong is a selfish spirit. If you are cheating on your spouse, you are selfish. You are putting your fleshly desires above the commands of God and above the vows you made with your spouse. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. These are the words of Jesus Christ. If you love me, keep my commandments. Do you love yourself more than God? Think of him and all he has done for you. He came to this earth and died for you, for your sins, for your transgressions. Jesus came and died for you. He paid a price you could not pay. No man on earth could do what needed to be done. No angel in heaven could do what needed to be done. But Jesus came down. Philippians 2 verses 6 through 8 says, Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus died the deaths of deaths for you. But I ask you today, do you love God? Do you? Now let me ask your life the way you're living. If your life could answer this question, what would your life say? Do you love God? John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Or do you love yourself more than God? Or do you love pleasure more than God? Do you love making money more than God? The truth is, there are those Christians that will continue to change, that will continue to love themselves more than God. Just make sure you are not one of them. How can I refocus my love for myself on God? Receive God's love and see yourself through the lens of his love for you. When you realize that you are complete in the Father's love, you have nothing else to prove or show. 1 John 4.19 says, We love him because he first loved us. You will let that love flow genuinely through you to others and everyone that comes in contact with you. It isn't always about you and you alone. Selfishness and self-centeredness aren't virtues that should be found in a believer. It's okay to remove yourself from the center of everything. See through the lens of other people. Humble yourself before him. When you come to realize that there's a creator and a supreme being who called you forth and brought you into existence, you will bring yourself under his lordship and guidance. You will come to his feet and let him guide your steps and precepts. Humility opens your eyes to the superiority of the Almighty. Humble yourself so that you can be lifted up by the Father. Luke 14, 11 says, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And then learn to put God first. When we put ourselves first always, we bear unnecessary burdens and shoulder responsibilities that could easily be taken care of by God. We were designed to get essence and meaning in God. Any life or pursuit outside him is vain. Put God in his rightful place and never try to take glory of what is his. Matthew 22, 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Dedicate your life to serving others and being responsible. We see how Jesus demonstrated the leader-servant relationship with his disciples. Even though he was the leader, he led a life of selflessness and meekness. He led and served. He cared for them. They went with him everywhere. He didn't place the focus on himself or constantly remind them every time that he was Jesus the Christ. He simply served and showed extraordinary leadership skills. He nurtured their spirit as well as their body. The call and prompting of God are unto repentance and living a life of righteousness. Mercy is always available and sufficient for anyone that will humble themselves, ask for it, and forsake their evil ways. God doesn't care what you've done or how far you've gone doing it. All he wants from us is a genuine heart of repentance and contrite spirit. Pray this prayer. Father, help me shift away focus from myself and look unto you. Help me become more selfless. I don't want to become so obsessed with myself that I become insensitive to the needs of those around me. I don't want to take your place in my heart. I want to demonstrate your selfless and unconditional love every day. Help me, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen.
1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.